All right, uh, running a few minutes late due to a Streamlabs update, uh, Streamlabs OBS update, uh, and I am ready to go. Make sure, make sure I'm presentable. All right, let's start Pillars of Eternity. We're gonna load up, and I believe we're at a point where we have to finish setting up our new character. We now have three new characters from the DLC areas. We have a monk, we have a berserker, and we have a rogue. Which means I'm in a full melee party. Yay! Well, the, the DLC characters I want to keep around in case I have quest, quests for them to do. So... I can't get rid of my tank, and I can't get rid of my main character. And I can't get rid of my priest. So, all my... Wait, did I get rid of my priest? No, I got rid of the wizard. So, melee all around. The first load on Pillars of Eternity is always the slowest. Hey, it's going pretty good, T-Bone. How you doing? You having a good day, man? I don't know how this all melee group is going to go. We'll have to see. Good, good. You you play any Pillars of Eternity today? First, your neighbors hound you because you say the wrong prayers at supper time. If it wasn't that, it'd be something else. Just their way of letting you know they care. Right here. Then some cross-eyed lord gets to stringing up your neighbors. Okay, so we're at a point where we've got her weapons set. Can't remember if I enchanted them. Let's take a look. Yes, I must have. Ah, oh, cool, cool. How is the controller controls for Pillars of Eternity on console? I heard they're pretty good. Okay, so we can't do a chest armor. I already tried that yesterday, so let's finish equipping her. Okay, so we have... Plus two enemies needed to flank and plus two perception. Uh, range damage, that's not really her thing, so let's do that. She needs a helmet. Stealth and of perception one. That's fine. That might be good for her. Let's see. Pilferer's grip. We'll look at the other gloves and see if she there's any better. Of dex two. Whereas this one is just one dex and 10% armor speed penalty. Minus 10%. That's good, that's good. Yes, I always wonder how they m manage to make some of these inventory heavy games work on consoles, but they do. I mean, heck, uh, Diablo 3, I don't know if you ever played Diablo 3. I prefer playing Diablo 3 on PS4 on console than I do on PC. It plays so much better with a controller. It's unbelievable. Mechanics. Uh, that's really only going to help her if she's picking locks. And she's got pretty good mechanics. So we're going to go with Pilfer's Grasp. Uh, so I need boots now. Sneak attack bonus, that's for jam. Uh, speed's good too, but not as good as sneak attack bonus. So I still need rings. What am I gonna do for rings? I really have no rings to give her. 
No rings and no belts, it looks like. Gonna have to start buying stuff off vendors as I see them. Yeah, it's great on controller. It just feels natural. Feels like you're controlling your character. Which you are with the controller, whereas Diablo on PC, uh, you're clicking and moving your character around. It just feels a lot better. Okay, so she's settled there. Let me talk to her. The ones that have been hounding me, so that worked out at least. The black marbles of her eyes scrape against their sockets as she looks at you. Galvino said you murdered several people before he transferred you. Effigies, eyes that man loved to talk. Her eyes roll in their sockets. Tell me why you killed those people. If it's sane and logical reasoning you're wanting, you're going to be disappointed. Ain't no sense in any of it. Something drove you to kill those people. It obviously matters. <sighs> a soft hissing noise comes from the bronze golem. You recognize it as a sigh. Mayhap you've heard of Coldmore. It was a quiet, forgettable patch of the woods. Till a pack of rabid clodhoppers set it afire. Yeah, um, you get a lot more. You know, I'm. I have zero problems gaming on both console and PC. Obviously, for from a st streaming point of view, it's easier on PC because I'm streaming from the PC, and my console, who which is used by other people in the house, is in the other room. And I can stream direct from the PS4, but it, I don't have all the bells and whistles and control of the stream like I do using OBS, uh, but I like, con I go through phases where I prefer PC gaming, and then I'll get tired of gaming on the PC, because I work on a computer all day, uh, and then I'll start focusing more on console gaming, uh, so I go through phases where I kind of bop back and forth, right now I'm on a PC phase, the fingers of one hand twitch and click against one another in a pair of sudden spastic motions. That was the start of the purges. Your woodens killing their own. What exactly happened to Coldmorn? A sudden burst of heat flares from her seams as her essence surges and boils. A farmer on the other side of the mountains woke up one day with his head all aflame and took it for the gibbering speech of his god. And so did a few thousand of his countrymen. So when he tired of Vorlis fields and marched west, a horde of armed hicks followed. You're talking about Wadewin and the Saints' War. A bunch of fool nonsense is what I'm talking about. But others have called it the same. If you know that much, then you've heard of Cold Morn. Ours was the village that let a few thousand of Widewind's troops pass through. You were from Cold Morn? When I heard what happened out there after the war, I couldn't believe my ears. Fine line between couldn't and wouldn't. Yeah, I completely, completely understand. You get to a point where you just get, you know, you put eight, ten hours a day on a computer and you get home and it's like, I can't even stomach even looking at a computer monitor right now. <laughs> I don't want to leave the couch. <laughs> Try I, telling a few hundred crazed deer woodens. We got news of the Raid Sarens coming through the mountains. Begged the Duke for help we did. She sweeps one bronze palm across another, metal screeching. Didn't send us so much as a bare-ass novitiate. They went to towns with full coffers and lofty connections. She crosses her arms over her plated chest. So we let Widewind soldiers pass. Left them for the Duke to wrangle on his own terms. Hear a soft clank as she flicks her wrist. So Cold Morn was purged in retaliation. It was after the Godhammer made a fine grit out of Widewind, when Deerwoodens were running on rage and looking for something to burn. You catch glimmers and glints at her seams as razor-thin wires pull tight within her body. They came at dark. Hundreds of folk. Every one of them mourning someone lost in the war. A dry, a dry chuckle ticks in her throat. Must have decided it was our duty to escort their dead back to the wheel. They didn't light their torches till they had us surrounded. Time we saw them, there was a ring of fire closing around us. She pauses, and a mechanism in the back of her skull clicks dully. I woke. Ran to the window. Whole village were a maze of flames. Couldn't see nothing for the smoke. And the screams... Her thumb spasms to a strange rhythmic, rhythmic beat. Most ran for the streets, got caught by the mob. Others hid, let their houses burn down around them. What does that have to... What did you do to survive? Ran, 
thought, hid, burned. Same as my neighbors and family. Just luckier. What does that have to do with your crimes? Hunting down the men and women what took part. Thought that much was clear. But you only killed people who attacked Cold One, right? Sure. Her voice is flat and as expressionless as her face. You want me to tell you straight? I found the men and women what destroyed my village, and I burned their houses down around them. Sometimes they was alone, and sometimes they wasn't. You couldn't have hoped to get them all. Well, we just gotta do our best with what time the gods give us, don't we? <laughs> she barks with a jangling laughter. What exactly did you hope to accomplish? It were a mob that destroyed our village. But it was just one man that burned my family's house. Kept hoping I'd get to him as I was working my way through the rest of those maggots. No matter now, I suppose. A sigh rattles out of her bronze skull, but her essence whips and twitches, as restless as a cat's tail. Why did you want to come with me? Stalwart's great this time of year. Bareth spells in bloom for a good five days, and the mountain squall actually blows the fish stench away from town. She turns away, clacking the fingers of one hand against her palm. Better than staying at Galvino's, anyway. You and Galvino had an unusual relationship. Only kind to have with someone like him. Or me. How long have you two known each other? Around about 13 years. Too long, you ask me. He claimed he made you. <laughs> He'd spread butter on bread and claim he made something. Never been accused of much like to that man. Her eyes roll wildly. He managed to stuff my soul into this heap of bronze, true enough. Maybe that makes him a genius. Also makes him a son of a bitch. She drums her fingers along one stretched bicep. Did you ever consider murdering him? Every day. Just kept putting it off. It's not like either of us was going anywhere. What exactly did you do for him? She regards you for several seconds. She shrugs. Looked after his tools, cleaned the workshop, swung the sledgehammer. Oh, and snatched up travelers for his soul tinkering. Those other golems, you mean. But don't you worry. They were all bad folk. Thank you for telling me. Just so you know, you got a real professional working for you. You resent him. No other way to feel about the man who flayed my living soul. Metal squeals as she shifts her folded arms. Let's talk about something else. Yeah, I've had enough of him too. She drops her arms, relaxing her posture. I get the feeling you're not welcome in stalwart. I got a reputation. People in these little villages ain't the most open-minded. Did you murder someone here? Not yet. I'd rather discuss another matter. About Durgan's battery. Just because I'm made of metal don't mean I got any special fondness for smiths and forges. She flicks the bronze of her forearm, producing a dissonant ring. ring. Do you know anything about it? No more than what Galvino already told you. Any thoughts on which villagers, villagers I should check? For fancy dwarven poetry? None of them ever struck me as especially literate. So whichever you can stand to get close to. She shrugs with a rattling of metal. And that's on you. I lost my sense of smell 13 years ago. Do you remember any of the other expeditions that came to Galvino? Eh, nothing specific. Everyone looks about the same when they got their fingers up their noses. She pauses thoughtfully, then her head snaps forward in a tiny, quick moment of realization. Only the last group, one before you, there was something different about them. Three of her fingers clench in spasm. Couldn't put my finger on it, but they was dangerous. Almost felt the hair on the back of my neck. She runs her hand along the smooth, seg segmented bronze of her neck. I ain't felt that way about anyone else walking through Galvino's door, that's for sure. Never mind. Murder? Tracking and the best materials for kindling. Those are more my area of expertise. What was your life like before the Saints War? There weren't much to say about it. By my reckoning, that means it was pretty good. She nods thoughtfully. Ma was a trapper. Taught me to set snares and dress game. Dad was a tinker. I never had his patience, but it were fun to watch him work. My brothers and sister, they was good folk too. Part of me's glad they ain't here to see me now. Her face is as blank as ever, but her essence ebbs and writhes. She turns away. That's all. Let me make sure that that's uh -huh. truly all. Yep. Okay. Tell me! Anything new for you? No. Zawa Anything is ready. What do you need of no. Zawa? Okay, so talking's done, mm. inventory's done, leveling's done. 
save our game and continue on exploring the overworld of Durgan's Battery. Okay, let's uh try and keep going down the side. Here. Right. No, oh, pardon me. Take up. Hello there. Always good to see more kith on the road. You can relax for the time being. Inga Air will let me know if any ogres come up on us. Ought to be heading down the mountain soon, but I've still got some supplies if you need anything. Who are you? Name's Terragar. I come up to Stalwart sometimes to trade. Nothing fancy, like your your Durin has. Just supplies, ingredients. Came out here to get some air after the raid. Never been much of one for towns. Which way to Durgan's Battery? You're one of those, huh? Just follow the road north, then west across the bridge. You'll know when you see it. Have a care. Lagafeth moved into the area not long ago, and they've already made short work of a few caravans. You know anything about the bandits in the area? Sure do. Most of the caravans have to take the one road down into the pass. A group of bandits set up shop just north of here before the bend. They'll just take a toll on... They'll just take a toll on good days. You're head most others. I keep clear of them myself, and they don't usually come down the mountain. Do you know anything about the caravan that came through here recently? Say what? Say saw what was left of it, anyways. You can find a few of the wagons just up the steps if you head towards the battery. He points to the northwest. Thought I'd have to look in case. Th thought I'd have a look in case there was anything to salvage, but they dragged everything they could carry across the bridge. Out of my reach for sure. Let's see what you have for sale. Sure thing. Have a look. Okay, nothing good armor or weapon wise. Could definitely use the lock picks. What's my situation with... I've, I know I've used up some lockpicks. Let's just buy them. Okay, so I'm full up. Pull up on lockpicks. There we go. My, now that I have the rogue, her mechanics and stealth is high enough, she could detect that. Oh, good, a ring. Just what she needed to. So that's one ring. Hmm. The one ring to rule them all. Okay. Uh, let's go over here. So we explored that southwest corner, went in the cavern, or we did not go in the cavern, but we went over that direction. Oh, I didn't mean to be stealthy. Okay, so if I... I think we just follow the road, or the path up on the left here. Mark 
Ogryn's fire casts light in dark places. Okay, so let's go take a left here. Follow along the outskirts. This device makes a terrible screeching noise. The compass points west. Mm. Dazed, prone, and dazed. Now we're useless. This might be a bounty fight, I wonder. It's tougher than a standard fight so far. Seem to be focused on my priest. Sure. A one hand flail. Okay, let's look at that. That can go to the priest. Yep, it was a bounty. Jeez, the flail ain't good though. And 
who would even use it? What about the Berserker? Not her. Not her. The flail may just have to be saved for hair vase or something. Uh, let's see, that can be saved for Aloth. Crate is empty, though it smells strongly of fish. I'll see what's ahead. In the trampled, bloody slush around this toppled wagon, you spy tracks leading back south along the path. campfire and a pry bar. Uh, let's go ahead and rest. My priest took a beating that last fight anyway, so that's fine. We have the free campfire here anyways. gonna cross that bridge yet we want to finish exploring up here first Sure. Okay, and there's a path to the northwest. And what does the flame reveal? Okay, so there's a watchtower, there's a cavern, there's a crossing. Okay. And there's wherever those stairs lead. Check these stairs first, since we're right here. Necklace, unconquerable. Plus two intellect while endurance above 50%, plus 25% focus gain while endurance above 50%. Not bad, but nothing really overly great either. Okay, so we explored up there. Let's go across the bridge and see what's there.
Let's get those two out there. Those two out there. And everybody else can stay on the middle. Go south first. The Redeemer uh, deal a thousand damage to enemies. Oh, cool! So I leveled that up. Uh, kill ten vessel with the Redeemer to unlock the next level or fifty enemies. Not a problem. If you say so. That'll do. Nothing really good there. Exceptional sled on Topaz. Gonna keep heading south along the edge and then start working our way up the outskirts. Pull tree! Chuck, 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 chuck. Keeping an eye out. It's not a good ring, but we'll give it to her so she has the slot filled at least. And you never know, suppress affliction might turn out to be okay. Find the Logfoot and Fair's artifacts. Return to Fair at Gref's Rest. Okay, that's good. campfire which I don't need at the moment if you say so that'll do a rapier one-handed take a look at it of deflection plus nine. 
Okay, so she's currently wearing that. But maybe it would be better to have her wear deflection so she doesn't take such a beating. Now, Rapier. He's using a two-hander. He uses a one-hander, and he's actually using a saber. Let's see if he's tailored towards Rapiers as well. No, just sabers. Uh, one hand weapons. She's using a sword and a saber. Let's see if she's tailored for... Same for her. No rapier. Do I just not like rapiers or something? Um, did I choose a weapons focus for her? Oh, she can use a rapier as well as the daggers. She's focused towards it. So let's actually take a look and see if it's an upgrade for her. Okay, so speed, they're all fast, 11 to 17, all roughly the same damage. Inflict steel, 5 second duration for each beneficial effect on the target. Steal 15% of the attack speed for 10 seconds on hit. Uh, it only looks okay, it doesn't look near as good as the others, so I'm just gonna stash it. It doesn't look that great. See what's ahead. Meat and hatchet. I love finding random if you meat. Say so. Meat. Got it done. Arcus. Behave, Lilo. That's my dog making growly noises because she hears noise outside. Okay, I'm not going to go in there quite yet. It's okay, Lilu. Relax. Okay.
that caravan must have had a half ton of steel. Coinmaster Zoltan's finally getting his way. For now, the other commandants will have his head. Only if they don't tear each other to pieces first. I heard Maroon and Exandru. Shh. Last thing I want is to get on Maroon's bad side. Fine, just say the words then. I'm getting hoarse. Keeping quiet. The dwarves sealed the door, never to emerge again. If there are answers, they lie within. Okay, so we got the door, we got a watchtower. Cavern, a cavern. Let's go back down here. Make sure we fully explored this. I'm right here. So let's head down here to this cavern. We'll start. Oh, no, no, no. I must not have the whole party selected. My bad. My bad. Alright, let's go ahead and save and then we shall head in. Hopefully there's no more ice dragons hiding in caverns. Used Ista's device to track down precious metals outside of Durgan's battery. Retrieve the ore. Oh, and if I find something good, you can have half. Okay, so it's not too large a place. Let's head up this direction.
Light in dark places. Let's go. Gotta see this. Light, flame, and sound. We'll keep to ourselves. Oh, just a regular bow. Right. Extra sapphire. So that's a fairly small cave. Oh, fussy Lilo. Huh. Gotta spend some minutes comforting the dog because there's strange noises outside scaring the pup. And now the kitty is jealous and needs to be loved on. It's okay, Lilo. Okay, let's go see what this exit is. Maybe it's in another cavern. Or maybe it's the top of that exit. Or the top cavern. Maybe the caverns are connected. That's exactly what it is. So the caverns are connected. We got a watchtower there. And we got Durgan's battery there. Considering I don't know how to get into Durgan's battery, let's go to the watchtower first. game it's been a little while we'll enter the watchtower all along the watchtower oh it just takes me to the top of the watchtower okay. and what does the flame reveal As you grab the boat, it vibrates with a strange and familiar energy. Searching your pack, you find the silver arrow that you found lodged in an injured winter wolf. As you hold the bow and arrow together, the arrow suddenly snaps into place. You hear a crackling hum, and a pale ribbon of light begins to form between the ends of the bow. When you pull the arrow back, you feel very solid resistance. Found storm collar added to inventory. That would be great for... Enchanter Cypher Ranger. That would be great for either Grieving Mother or Sagani. Neither of which I had have, have with my party at the moment. Yeah. Did I forget that? Mm -hmm. I didn't think I did. Good thing I'm freshly greased. Yeah. 
Everybody come together. Let's go back inside. Calm down, animales. I know you're panicking. Maybe it's something I could reach from down here, but I don't... No, it's way up there. The, the, I've got to get through into Durgan's battery first, I think. Okay, so that's all. Caverns are done. Watchtower's done. Okay, let's go take a look at what the door wants. Save. The door may spit at us angrily. Rage. Through the wind and the ice. Though the wind and the ice have pried long, jagged cracks in the walls, the door feels as solid and as cold as a glacier. Gilded panels are arranged in columns along the doors, though most depict scenes from daily life. Dwarves chiseling at tunnel walls, haul in minecarts, or feasting at long tables. One pane at eye level catches your attention. It's a relief shown, a crenellated wall, and above it, an indentation in the shape of an anvil. Place the anvil tile in the relief. The anvil-shaped tile fits perfectly in the impression. You feel a warm thrum in your fingertips as you snap into place. Leave for now. Push the door. Even with all your weight behind it, it doesn't budge. Examine the relief. This panel isn't as bright or detailed as the others, but it's a masterwork of precision. Every ridge and groove is straight and even. The relief is pitted from centuries of exposure, yet the metal feels warmest to your hands. Okay, so I don't have this crenellated wall thing. Fire so let's take a look at what the quest says. Places. Find a way to unlock Durgan's battery. Find a villager and stalwart whose sole ancestor is a dwarf of Durgan's battery. Keep an eye on the devil of Karak. Gotcha. Discover how Yagdur died. Yeah, that's the dragon. Journey to the Abbey of the Fallen Moon. I don't even know where that is. Return to Fiera at Grief's Rest. So Grief's Rest, so I've got a couple things to go to Stalwart. I also have this bounty. I've got to search the fishery at night and return to Ista. Okay, so let's head back to Stalwart. While my characters are running, I'm going to calm the pets. couple nervous animales. That's right. Oh, I didn't know they were sneaking. I thought they were running. My bad. My bad. Let's 
Let's go to Stalwart Village, turn in some quests, Progr progress some others. <sighs> I forgot I need to charge my phone, it's dead. Hopefully the wife is okay on her little trip to the store. Lay down, Lilo. It's okay, puppy. Lay down. Didn't think I'd miss this place. Had that much, right? I'm still looking for someone to take care of these dangerous folk roaming the area if you're up to it. Metzl of the Sisterhood of the Slake Skull is dead. He grins. Kinda ironic, isn't it? She went around killing people for Bareth, and in the end, that's what... Oh, never mind. Just take the bounty. He passes you a bag that rattles with coin. Moderate positive. I've heard some reports, some new reports of dangerous folk about. Perhaps you'd be interested in going after them, too? I'm interested. Let's hear them. That'd be the Disciples of the True Flame and the Old Dunnard Hunting Lodge. He shakes his head. Those others you handled are lambs by comparison. What's the old Dunnard Hunting Lodge? He shakes his head. Adrian's of too much time and money. They travel around hunting monsters for sport. But they leave a mess of wrecked property and dead bodies. Kith, I mean. In their wake. They've been charged with murder. Did the doggy go away? The doggy did go away. The doggy's in the doorway to the, bed, to the computer room. They've been charged with murder and general mischief in Defiance Bay, New AMR, and a dozen other towns in between. Someone saw them hunting in the Russet Woods, so you might look for them there. Tell me about the Disciples of the True Flame. He scratches the back of his neck. I didn't know what to make of this one, but word is it's a group of dragon cultists. He holds up his hands. I know it sounds bizarre. I didn't believe it myself until I heard they'd torched an outpost north of Maiden Falls. For clearing a nest of worms, they said. Last I heard, they'd made camp near Long Watch Falls. They shouldn't be hard to spot. Alright, two more bounties. It's night time, isn't it? So now would be the time to go to the fishery for that one quest. How do I tell what time it is? I guess there's no way to tell. Taxes collected. Alright. Oh, she's got a converse option. Village was a touch livelier when I saw it last. Ain't saying much, though. Her head swivels as she looks around. What do you remember about Stalwart? Bitter cold and a persistent odor of fish. And that were just the people. Why did you want to come back, anyway? Anything's better than Galvino's workshop. You ain't heard the old buzzard sing. She turns away again. Anyway, what about you? We've seen lots coming through, trying to crack the battery, but no watchers. Stalwart needed my help. <laughs> the do-gooder of the Deerwood. You're a rare breed these days. But don't let me keep you from the sights and sounds of Stalwart. They're easy to miss. She rests her hands on her hips and turns to look around. I want to ask you about something else. Huh? Guess that's it. Hmm. Alright, let's go in the fishery and catch this guy red-handed. Lay down. It's okay. You're not in trouble. It's okay, Lilo. I know you're nervous, Nelly. <sighs> Sorry. The wife is out having to go to the store, and I'm having to take care of the animals, and and it just so happens the lawns are getting mowed in the area, and and now Lee was all a nervous twitter. Lay down. It's okay. Lay down. Oh, you want a shake? Good girl. I know. I know. Oh, nervous. Nervous Nelly. Lay down. And now the jealous kitty. Sorry the interruption. Just trying to keep the pets from shaking themselves to pieces. Good 
girl. I don't even remember if I saved. Okay, lay down. Lay down, girls. I'm surrounded by women. Not a sound. Sure. Address artist bracelet. This bracelet is comprised of many small interwoven beads and is held together by a fine silver clasp. Together, the beads form a stylized image of mountain peaks. You reach into the barrel and find a bracelet. A thick aura of essence clings to it, fresh of memory. You feel yourself drawn into it. In the memory, you stride into the fishery. The floors are swept clean, but the wood is still splotched with snowmelt and fish guts. A man hunkers in the corner, his head nodding forward as if in sleep. He looks up drowsily as you approach. It's gurned. His face is youthful but sallow, and his hair hangs in stringy locks. You feel a pang, a pang of anger and pity at your brother's debauchery. Arda. His voice is a little more in a croak. It's past midnight. Your throat feels tight. Grin wipes at his nose, then examines the mingled blood and powder on the back of his hand. He shrugs. Your fingers clench around coarse, thick fabric, your father's best wool cloak, tucked under your arm. Go! To raid Ceres, or Defiance Bay, or fucking Air Glonfoth. I don't care! You hurled it. You hurl it at the ingrate huddled on the floor. He picks up the cloak and looks out with some sort of dull wonder. He wipes his nose on the lining. A sudden rush of fury leaves your limbs weak and raw. I'll tell them. Mayor Cena healed. The neighbors. Everyone. You force the words through your teeth. But what? He mumbles, churning his woods from a morass of snot and saliva. The stealing. You think I haven't noticed the money missing from the fishery coffers? Or heard Tana talk about losing a golden duke? You whisper, afraid even now that someone will overhear you, and the words scorch your throat. You can't be found when there's work to do, but every time those merchant wagons roll into town, you've got coin enough for a few bags of ripple sponge. No, it's not. He rubs his red-rimmed eyes. Your own grow warm and blurry. Stalwart tolerates your sponge habit but they won't abide your thieving. You touch your bracelet, a gift from Mother, plucking at the beads. You won't. He rises, steadier on his feet than you would have thought. I will. You stride towards him. I wouldn't have shamed Mother and Father while they was living, but I won't let this keep up. Your anger swallows the last of your pity. Anger at him for putting you in this position, for doubting your resolve, for failing to see... You're close enough to smell his stale, sour breath when he pushes you. You fall, watching his widening eyes and the ceiling spinning into your vision. Isn't this just like him? Grinned with his full tantrums, never thinking of anybody but himself. And now you're going to be nursing a headache for a week. Just goes to show you can't help some people, but you remember him too. You, but you remember him too, your baby brother, running through the snow, slipping, falling on ice. And you're slipping and falling, and there's a table up behind you, but it shouldn't. The memory ends abruptly, jolting you back into the present with your heart hammering and your palms sweating. He killed his sister, it sounds like, or something. The fishery door creaks open, and in walks Garen staring at you and the bracelet in surprise and outrage. His face drains a color. You take shelter in our village and then ransack it like a common thief? You'd better explain yourself! His voice shakes, as do his wide, squared shoulders. Galvino told me you were a ripple sponge addict. Seems you're much more than that. Any who put stock in the ravings of that bitter old fool deserve all the trouble they get. He raises his voice, half turning to the guard with him. You killed your sister Arda right here in this room. He opens his mouth to reply, but the words catch in his throat. The guard next to him stares at the bracelet, recognition turning to horror. Worth coming back for this alone. It was an accident. I was a failure and a wretch then. But I, I never would have killed anyone. Least of all my own kin. He turns his gaze down, offering his apology to his own clenched fists. So my character is stoic and rational. 
I could do stoic, which is say nothing, listen, or rational. Of course you'd say that. Anyone in your position would. I gave her body to the lake, but I kept her bracelet to remember the cost of my own weakness. He loosens his hands and stares at the emptiness in his leathery palms. I ain't asking for forgiveness. I know I don't deserve any. My penance is my work on behalf of the village. And they need it, truly. You've seen the shape this place is in. Have mercy on Stalward, if not on me. Let me do the work Arda would have done. That's my debt to Stalward. And the only fitting way to honor my sister. Uh, this village will suffer. And they're on the raggedy edge as it is. Toss him the bracelet. Very well. Here, take the bracelet. He snatches it out of the air and looks at it in wonder and sorrow. Finally, he tucks it into his pocket. Thank you. Stalwart may not know what you've done for them tonight, but they'll hear of your honor. Another task completed. Major adventure added the Quest of Swires in one day. What's a major adventure? Average reputation bonus, average item. Expires in 25 hours. Duration, three turns. Assign. Let's, uh, send Grieving Mother. What does she sell in Greta? Oh, she wants to do experiments. Screw her. Fucking Animancers. Animancers, while they're not cause of Wadewind's legacy, they also tend to do repulsive things in the interest of learning and science. Playing with people's souls. Okay, so let's... We're still looking for somebody that's close. Uh, return to Farah at the Gra Grave's Rest. I think I have a quest for somebody over here done, too. I hope you've had some luck. And do take care with that device. It has a few rather delicate components. I didn't find any ore deposits, but I did find this. What? So it works? What a day! But why these gems? I didn't think the device would be able to pick up inert Audra. Fascinating. I have to study this further. But all the same, it worked! At last! A breakthrough! With that Audra to work from, I can refine the enchantments. We'll be digging up iron, gold, Audra, all of it! Here you are. This is going to change everything. Oh, and I won't leave you empty-handed, of course. Here, I had this set aside for supplies, but I don't think I'll be staying in Stalwart much longer. I won't forget all you've done for me. They'll hear about this back home, I promise you. Who knows? Perhaps they'll name the next battery after you. Stalwart moderate positive. Okay, so Freya and Grief's Rest. Hey there. Let me know if you need anything. Wouldn't it be funny if this guy's the key to opening uh, Durg Durgan's battery? Lilu, stop. Don't feast on yourself. No chewing, okay? I know you taste all good and stuff, but no eating on yourself. I know you're nervous, but now you can lay down. Lay down next to your sister. Lay down, Lilo. Lilo, come on. Hey. You're just not going to listen to your daddy. I had some questions. Sure, ask away. Not sure what I can tell you, though. I haven't been here half as long as most. What can you tell me about Star Wars? Truth is, I couldn't care less about the town, or the mines. But I like the people. Hardy bunch, living up here in the cold. Shame most of them have packed up. 
Feels like everything's conspiring to chase us out of here sometimes. Just means the ones of us that are left are the most stubborn-headed, right? Or foolish? I think I asked these already when I first met them, but they've reflagged as not asked. Me? So. Well, I used to build houses. These days I do this and that. Get work at the fishery sometimes, mending nets. Right now I'm helping with the stockades. The ogres keep us busy. I'm from Ina's Rest originally. Not so far from your Cadnua, actually. A little ways east. Nice lake nearby. A little like the one here. I heard some business went down with Lord Radric. Might have ended up tithing to you instead if I were still there. My lord. Rayfold cracks a grin. That's all the questions right. I had. Anything else then? Let's read his soul. The snowy paths peel away and the brisk air gives way to the acrid stench of smoke. A dark cloud billows up from the remnants of a burning house at the far edge of a rocky field. You are low to the ground, held in place, and above you the wind tugs embers back and forth like firebugs. The vision in your Not left so eye is brave clouded. now, are you? The vision in your left eye is clouded, such that the figure standing over you is a collection of rough smears of black, cast in a silhouette by the fire. A dark shape swings towards your face, and the subsequent burst of agony jars you out of the memory and back of your own skin. You got the look of someone with his teeth around a secret. Her cold fingers are locked around your arm. Her black eyes search you. I wouldn't call it a secret. It's more like a mysterious thing he doesn't like to talk about. What? Did I spill something on myself? Farewell. Let's talk to her. Didn't think there was anything more in lice and hoarfrost to these folk, but you had a look back there. What do you find when you're rooting around like that? The fabric of a soul. Yeah? And I'll bet you could do the same to anyone in this village. Easy as looking at them. She watches you intently. Why do you want to know? Mayhap I'm looking for someone. Woodcutter, by the name of Harmka. Tell me why you want to find Harmka. So I can kill him. Wrap my fingers around his throat till he's as cold as his wretched village. Her fingers tighten into fists, the metal squealing and rattling. He was one of them. The mob that destroyed Cold Morn. I tracked him to Stalwart years ago, but got caught before I could finish my business. Dark, iridescent whirls appear and fade on her chest plate. Heat ripples from her metal carapace. It's been 13 years and you're still after him? We all gotta have something that gets us out of bed in the morning. A note of cold fury buzzes within her. This man, Harmka. I saw him outside my house the night it burned, staring into the flames the way I seen you stare into souls. Her fists clench and loosen in a series of rapid, random movements. I knew it were a fool's errand trying to hunt down every man and woman that carried a torch into cold morn, but I... She twists her head from side to side and holds up a hand. The delicately engraved palm, empty but grasping at something. If I knew I got the one responsible for my kin and my hearth, I might could rest easy. How can you be so sure about this harm kit fellow? I took a good long look that night. Ours was a little place with a yellow door, right on the edge of town. He was there. She nods slowly. Besides, I asked around when I first got to Stalwart. Townsfolk said that all the woodcutters in town took part in the purge. Point of pride for them. A small plume of heat rises from a seam in her skull. What does this have to do with me? I told you he was part of the mob. I spotted him watching my house when it burned. But when we find him, I want to know if he's the one responsible for my home. My parents and my brothers and sister. One of her thumbs rubs absently to scratch on her hand. I never thought I'd have the chance to know for sure. But you could look into his soul and find out. You being a watcher and all. Finding out might be getting your hopes up. How would you feel about a solid hunch instead? I'll do what I can. Mighty fine of you. Mighty fine indeed. She nods again, her head bobbing along to a drowsy cadence. Don't know where he dallies these days, but someone in Stalwart could tell us. People from little villages, they always know. Uh. 
There she is. You look like you've been in the wilds. You see my wagon out there? I found you good. You've saved my hide. I can't thank you enough. But I hope you'll take this. Fair enough. I'll take my reward then. Here. As promised. 500 copper. All that for 500 copper. Thanks again. With a little luck, I'll trade these blizzards in for a sea breeze soon enough. Major adventure completed. Grieving mother returns to stronghold of avid reputation with Defiance Bay. And items. Spoils await in the Great Hall treasury chest. Excellent. Back to warm your hands, eh? What can I do for you? Do you know a man named Harmke? The woodcutter? Sure do. Head west from the village, then go north. If you see the frozen stream, you've gone too far. Thank you. Usually works a stand of trees out in the russet wood, though he steps out from time to time. Well, what are we waiting for? The only way to be free of revenge is to never pursue it. Turn the other way and never look back. Read his soul. You see a room, dark and damp. A cellar. It looks like a part of the inn rather than an old fortress. Though Hefric's eyes, through Hefric's eyes, you admire rows of gleaming bottles, recently dusted and polished. As you step back from the shelves, you look on with satisfaction at a pressure plate concealed in the stone floor. You all right? I won't serve you if you're already drunk, you know. Let's, Top quality bear pelts on every bed. Let's spend a night. <sighs> the one that got away, huh? Okay. I think I'm still looking for a villager and stalwart. Let's go see the mayor's house. Could also be the vendor. Let me know if take care. You must. Talk to Aldrich. Seems I was wrong about you. Most of these adventurers come for gold and glory and leave us with a new heap of trouble. You've been different. Read a soul. You you reach for Aldrich's essence and find yourself staring at a fence post lying in a filthy slush of frozen mud. Snow gathers around your legs and trickles into your boots. A wind nips at you even through layers of fur. Furs. You hold a wood chisel in one numb hand and a mallet in the other. Kneeling over the pence, fence post, you get to work. Hour after hour, you hammer away, feeling the tools grow heavy in your grip as your breath fogs your vision. You want to do better work than this. You can do better work than this. But no one's building new houses in Stalwart. The last table you crafted was put into the fishery, and pike entrails now trace the fine dovetail joints you so lovingly carved. Now you mend the stockade because that's what's needed. The chisel slips, skidding alongside your hand. You gasp, but you hold up your hand and see. Much to your relief. All five fingers wiggling back at you. You need to get out of this town. You pull back from Aldrich's soul. He's still staring into the fire, seemingly lost in his own memories, too. Something else you need? Farewell. The wife just got home. I'm going to see if she needs help carting the groceries in. I'm just going to mute the headset, put it on Be Right Back, and I'll be right back.
Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was gone longer than I had planned. <sighs> okay. Sorry about that again. Oh, what was I doing? I'm just going to try this beer. All right. I take it you've met Galvino. Renegold glances at the devil of Carol, her eyes narrowing. Examine Renegold's soul. Your awareness settles beneath Renegold's skin. You feel yourself looking through her eyes upon a time faded memory. You're standing in the inn. The room is stifling, but it's the body heat of so many furious villagers, not the neglected fire pit that just drawn sweat from your pores. <sighs> Your husband waits by the door, about as far as he can get from the assembly. He holds Aldrich, whose cheeks are bright as he watches the adults bicker with wide, fearful eyes. You'd never realized how badly your neighbors stank, but something rank and repulsive rises from them as they pack together in this room. How much, how did, much the old did the old snake pay you, Sina Hio? It's grinned, the head fisherman jab enough Fury's finger towards the back of the room. Sinahoed, your erstwhile mare, squirms in a corner, pinned by the accusing stares of the entire village. Oh, those eyes, they're, cr they're cruel, porcine eyes, and they're watching Sinahoed with a thumb gluttony of hogs staring at fodder. The only sight that turns your stomach more is Sinahoed himself, trying to wriggle free of his own lies. <laughs> Maestro Galvino and I came to an agreement. I it was for the good of Stalwart. Uh, I thought... You thought you'd let a killer walk among us? Cries of fierce agreement rise from the others. What began as a collective grumbling is swelling and congealing like storm clouds. You look back at your husband. He's whispering to Aldrich, but when you catch his eye, he directs a silent supplication to you. Let's go. A wet smack draws your attention back to the other end of the room. Someone's thrown a potato, and Sinahood cringes and rubs his jaw. You want to shout at them all for this nonsense and waste, but you know this is about to get worse. Stall will have blood, and Galvino and his horror had the sense to flee already. You turn again, your husband is beckoning you with swift chopping motions, but what stops your breath is Aldrich. His little eyes are fixed on the churning mob, and you knew ever since you started hearing about those hideous purges that he'd see something like this one day. But it'd have to be so soon. It's what drove that devil woman to madness, and now his little eyes have gotten big, big enough to swallow the whole scene. And now he's seeing you as part of it. You want to leave now, but if you do, this is what your boy will remember. Cowardice and madness. About people. About stalwart. About you. The people around you jostle and bark in their rage. They're dangerous animals, but animals nonetheless. They just need to be led. So you push your way to the end of the room where Sinahow trembles in a puddle of his own piss. Enough. Enough! Your voice boils up from your throat. The others fall silent, watching you. They listen, dumbly trusting as you turn Sinahow's death sentence into an exile. No one contradicts you when you explain that he's going to march out of this village alone and into whatever miserable hamlet will have him. They silently agree when you explain that their hands are too clean for the likes of him. But there's something else forming behind their eyes, a kernel of trust and dependence. You feel it curdling around you, encasing you like a pearl does sand. You only want to spare Sinahoud's life, not volunteer for his job. But you see so much fear simmering just below, beneath their expressions. Fear at godmen marching through the mountains, at deer woodens and their purges, at dying the slow and lonely death of a ghost town. And you see their grateful reassurance mirrored in Aldrich's expression. Perhaps this place is hopeless, but you realize that you can't leave it any more than you could leave your boy. The only person who isn't looking at you is your husband. He's shaking his head, his eyes on the door. You retreat from Renan Gold's memory. Vivid though it is, it has none to do with Durgan's battery. What's on your mind? Farewell. Okay, you know what? I, th I think I know who's the old soul I have to talk to. The old lady. The old senile lady. I have to look at her soul. Oh 
she is in this house, I think. If not, we'll check. to speak up Look my hearing soul. ain't what it was you feel her essence humming and buzzing another personality and set of memories lies dormant within her soul convulsing as if in fitful sleep the contours of that dormant soul are sharp ragged as you reach out for it it seizes you violently you're standing in a darkened feast hall sturdy tables and benches have been stacked against the door in the far end of the room you know it won't be enough a few dozen other doors from your tunneling crew wait with you Shovels and pickaxes in their shaking hands. Sinove, please. If we go now, we can get behind the barricade. We we won't do any good here. He's right, and you hear agreement in the quiet murmur of the others. But Arms Warden Maron ordered you to hold your ground here. Yet in those rising whispers, you hear the opening bars of mutiny. You never tolerate, you you've never tolerated insubordination from your crew, and you aren't about to start. So you heft your pickaxe and swing it into the man's skull. He collapses and the others fall silent. The acrid odor of urine rises from his body. We're gonna go down fighting. Anyone who feels differently can settle it with me right now. Your voice is hoarse from hours of shouting orders, but no one else moves. They cast their eyes down in the flickering torchlight. Something thuds against the door. The others raise their weapons, pick shovels and a few swords, but they don't dare flinch. Your own pulse pounds at your temples. You pull back from Tana's soul, but you feel Zeno's wrath and ferocity tugging at you still. Her essence thrashes, lashing out at an unseen enemy. Zenova is powerful, but dangerous too. Her fury has anchored her to old and threatening memories. You consider that there may be others you could awaken. Tana, however, seems unaware of any of this, and she blinks back at you with cloudy, placid eyes. Awaken Zenova and remember your battle in the feast hall. A tremor passes through Tana's face, and then her rumpled skin goes slack. After a racking cough, she blinks like someone slowly coming to consciousness. That name. It carries memories of death. War. Fury. The taste of blood. Her eyes have what grown do you want unusually with it? clear. If she attacks and I have to punch out an old lady, I don't want to hear about it from anybody. There is nothing I could do. I need to enter Durgan's battery. What trickery is this, stranger? You think a Pargrin would so easily betray her own people. Her hands clench and unclench around an imaginary weapon. Sinova's essence stirs with the same battle-ready fervor you sensed in her memory from Durgan's battery. She is dangerous. Beneath Sinov, Tuena's overwhelmed consciousness struggles. The last year people disappeared hundreds of years ago. There's nothing left to betray. Zenova's rage is a heavy fog that clots and thickens, choking Tana's fading consciousness. Zenova herself is overwhelmed, and she forces Tana's eyes into narrow slits. Lies! Arms Warden Maroon will see you cast into the White Forge! You're mistaken. Calm down. You'd rob us of our steel and leave us bleeding. I- She doubles over, coughing and convulsing. Zenova at last overwhelms Tana, screaming through the old woman's mouth. In that instance... Zenova's psyche expands, filling you with a lifetime's worth of memories and experiences, including a set of verses that you know to be the Cantec of Durgan's battery. Hammers of Durgan, ring loud. May the anvil's deep music resound. Walls of the battery safeguard our works from marauder and wilder alike. Abidun's faithful travail by the forge and the fires that brighten the ore. It's too much for Tana's dying consciousness. It shrivels and vanishes as Sinov, down full control of Tana's body, attacks. <laughs> well, it's not stealing now.
If you say so. That'll do. Okay, so let's look at the quests again. I can open Durgan's battery, find Harmka, who's out to the west. Bounties are out to the west as well. Alright, let's go to uh, Russet Wood. It's him, Harmke. I remember that weak chin, those knobby knees. Knobbly knees. She stopped, staring motionless at the figures among the trees. A weak chin and knobbly knees. Can't be too many people matching that description. How goes? The elven man emerges in, into the clearing and freezes, staring at the devil, Karak. For an elf, he's tall and rangy, with a weather beat face beneath string of greasy hair. The others with him turn, glaring and gaping at the bronze golem. Horrock Shadow! What's that wicked thing doing here? Why are you so nervous? It's a killer! Look, we don't want no trouble. Just trying to do our work. Beads of sweat have formed on his forehead despite the chilly air. We'd be much obliged if you'd leave us be. And take that thing with you. He looks at the devil of a mixture of terror and loathing. Enough. What do you see, Ponzeric? Is that the man who torched us? The devil sways on her feet, her whole body moving around the axis of her ankles. Though she's talking to you, her attention, a concentrated sphere of essence, is focused on Harmke. Who are you? Just a woodcutter. Ask anyone in Stalwart. They'll tell you. What are you dallying for? See what's written on the bastard's soul. Her essence boils the frost. Harmke, do you remember the village of Coldmorn? Everyone does. Let the raid Sarens into the Deerwood. What's that got to do with anything? I want answers, Pons, Eric. If he don't stop his mule and so help me, I'll rip them out of his head myself. Read Harmke's soul. He steps away from you, but your awareness reaches through his trembling skin and the feeble resistance of his fear. You see memories, snow-shrouded forests partitioned by fallen pines and firs, days measured by the steady swing of your axe. There are other moments, too, recollections that flare up like a hearth swelcome in fire. There are children, spry and lanky like you, but still full of the rowdy energy of youth. Together, you scatter winter bloom petals on a grave. You reach deeper into Harmke's soul. Years roll back. A torch in your left hand bathes your face and shoulder in heat. All around you are other men and women holding other torches, and the mountain air is acrid with the stench of smoke and sweat. Rage billows off of the others. It's been a fever in your blood for days now, exhausting you, invigorating you in equal measure. You're at the edge of that town, Coldmore. It's hours yet before dawn, but the commotion has started to awaken the village. Candlelight ignites behind frost-crusted windows, and haunted faces peer out at you through the glass. You begin to doubt yourself. Just then, a door slams. A villager comes racing through the streets, kicking up snow. With his stark white face and pale hair, he looks almost like a ghost. The line of torchbearers ripples as he gets closer. He picks up speed, but nobody moves towards him. 
You imagine him breaking through the row, shattering your ranks like the bad dream that brought you all here. You imagine waking up in your bed, the heat from your torch, nothing more than the warmth of your wife's, of your wife sleeping next to you. Instead, the villager reaches the ro row of torchbearers a stone's throw away from you. A woman advances from the line and buries her dagger in his neck. The rest of your fellows shout. Rage, memory, and bloodthirsty triumph boil up in you. You all came with a purpose. You came to bring justice to the traitors of Coldborn. Pardon me. The next few hours are painted in colors more vivid than life. You put your torch to anything that stands and your sword to anyone who runs. It is as if Magrin herself whispers in your ear and guides your hand. Exhaustion has almost cooled your rage when you spy a house at the edge of town, one of the only buildings that hasn't already burned. It's flanked by a knotty spruce trees and the doors painted yellow. Yellow, the bloom of sunrise, the hue of your son's hair, the color of cowardice. Just then, someone barrels into you from behind. It's a man, someone you remember from the journey to Coldmorn, though you can't recall his name. He snarls at you, mad with indiscriminate rage, and it occurs to you that he's mistaken you for one of the villagers. You smash the window and hurl your torch inside. The other man has turned away. You think you hear a child shriek from within the house, but it's impossible to tell above the roar of the riot. Harmke shivers as you pull away from his memory. His eyes are wide with guilt and fear. Spit it out, Pons Eric. What did you see? Her feet are rooted in the snow, but her limbs jerk and jangle. It's not that simple. Don't give me that greasy horse shit. You looked into the squalid dregs of his soul. Tell me what you saw. She steps towards you, strangely clumsy. Heat patterns streak and flare across her body. The snow melts around her feet. He's not responsible for what happened to your family. But I remember him. How can you be so sure? Her fists clanged down under her knees. Memory's fickle. You remember what you wish to recall. As she looked from Harmke, from Harmke back to you, a despairing groan rises out of her throat. Questions bubble and burst in her essence. Finally, the heat patterns fade from her chest plate, and her body surrenders its tension. What a waste. She watches as Harmke runs and stumbles away. As he disappears, she turns back, her joints rattling like empty pots and pans. Almost 15 years I've been looking for him. She stares ahead as you approach. The ink black marbles of her eyes fixed on some distant point. Her essence swells and swirls in the throes of contemplation. Now I'd rather we never cross tracks. She shivers, metal, ra metal rattling. But you have more certainty now. Surely that's better, rational. I only know it weren't him that torched my house. Don't know that I'd call that certainty. Used to be I had something to hunger for. Stung at me night and day, but at least it was something. She looks at her empty hands, the fingers splayed like a dead spider's legs. Now there's nothing. Not even that burn of wanting something. Just that look on his face. She shakes her head. What look? Horror? Fear? No. More than that. After cold morn, folk used to leer at my burns, full of disgust. Or they'd realize who I was, and then it was the terror. Maybe hate. She tilts her head to the side. But this... The way Harmka looked at me. The way I've seen near everyone but you and Galvino look at me. All it did was remind me... Of what? That this is a madman's fever dream. Like a prison. But no, because in a prison, you lay your head down, and you feel the straw soft beneath you. Your flesh prickling in the cold, black bread crumbling on your tongue. She turns her arms in front of her, examining the scroll work on the backs of her hands with horror and wonder. Pain and pleasure are distractions. You're lucky to avoid them. Your body has unique strengths and advantages, too. Rational. I'd trade them all if I could feel the snow cold around my ankles. I still dream on folk. I wake up some mornings wondering why I can't feel the floor beneath me, thinking I, I must have fallen and gone crippled. But then I lift my head, see a bronze corpse stretching out in front of me. At least you're alive. That's something. I dream too of what Galvino did that night. Those moments. I'd endure another cold morn if it'd spare me this fate. 
She rubs her hands together, tracing her even joints with her fingertips. What happened exactly? It was after I got caught in Stalwart. They'd locked me in a little house by the inn, the old mare and his crumbs. Her head dips as she remembers. When a crowd of them came for me in the dark of night, I was only surprised it had taken them so long. She hesitates. Only they didn't march me to no gallows. No. They snuck me to another house on the edge of town, real sneaky-like. That's where I met Galvino. She raises her head, her black eyes shining. Galvino was living in Stalwart at the time? True enough. This was before the locals gave him the boot. Still weren't a popular fellow, though. He was fiddling with some machinery in his workshop. Had his sleeves rolled up, even though it was cold enough to see your breath. Never actually looked at me until he started fitting some copper helmet over my head. By that time, the mayor's goons had me trussed up good and tight. Galvino was having himself a grand time barking orders at that lot. What did the mayor have to do with this? He had agreed to hand me over to Galvino for an experiment. She waves her hands at the word, metal flashing. Claimed it was a fair punishment, but the town folk weren't too pleased with being denied their stone pitching. She crosses her arms, nodding. Didn't help that they heard the jangle of copper in that deal. In the end, that's what sent Galvino and the old mare packing. I see. So while Galvino's fastening that helmet over my head and them copper bands around my arms, I'm starting to look at his contraption. And that's when I see it. Her black eyes are fixed on some indefinable point her essence stems. It's this metal suit strapped into the machine, just like me. A cold, dead-eyed thing, all done up with fancy carvings and such. She shivers, her joints chittering. Did you know what they intended? I had this terrible cold feeling in my gut. But I still couldn't figure. She shakes her head. I start asking Galvino and the rest of them what's going on. But they're too busy to answer. Then suddenly, they're waiting. Staring at me with that fixed, horrified look. But they ain't watching me. They're watching for something to happen. Her eyes flicker, rolling and scraping behind her face. Galvino tells the woman nearest the machine to flip the handle. And then, just pain. Being torn apart every which way, feeling my soul peeled from my body. Her limbs twitch and shudder. She pauses, waiting for her body to fall still. By the time I came to, I couldn't feel a thing. Just this dull distant sort of ache. I heard the old man cackling and chattering. I saw him looming over me, looking down at my, at me with hungry eyes. I tried to scream, tried to swing at him. I think that was when I knew. She shakes her head and falls silent. And that's how you ended up here. Sure enough, and how Galvino ended up in that little shack. The rest of Stalwart didn't take kindly to having a killer in their midst, nor to seeing their mayor and the army Valians strike a secret deal. They drove Galvino out, destroyed a fortune in machinery, and wrote a letter to the Academy in Salona, ruining what was left of his name. Still, he's lucky he didn't get a pelting. The old mare fled, too, and Stalwart's been as snug and cheery as ever. Now that we've dealt with Hamke, why have, why have you stuck around? You're better company than Galvino. She says it in an offhand, teasing fashion, but she looks away from you, fidgeting with a rivet. Been a while since I were out in the world. Guess I'm keen on seeing more of it. Even if I'm stuck with a bleeding heart. Anyways, I've been wondering about that fortress. She looks away again, flexing her wrist joint. Durgan's battery? What about it? She's quiet, fixated on her squeaking joint. Near everyone thinks it'll have just the thing they need. She ticks a list off on her clicking fingers. Those villagers wanted to fix up their brook downtown. Galvino always thought it carried some great secret of Animanson. And all them adventurers came looking for fancy gear. What were you hoping to find? I don't know. Something to help me feel. Or forget. Effigy's eyes. Maybe just something new. The tips of her metal fingers clank together. I just figured, with those dwarves being expert smiths and all, maybe they had something to unmake me. Put me back into my body. I doubt that's possible. Your body's decayed by now. I know. It were just a passing fancy. She turns away, her essence buzzing with agitation. When I ask you about son. That's all. Quest expires in two days.
Assign Hervé's. Something has awakened in the Black Hills of Abbott, a great and terrible titan that rises up from beneath the ground to devour coal mines and destroys its workers as it passes. Even sailors come nearer. I bet from the Deadfire Archipelago has seen the behemoth walking along the string screaming cliffs. No one is certain where the creatures come from or when it stopped terrorizing the Black Hills, but the ruling families of Abbott seem uninterested in intervening directly. Head up this way. No, no, no. Yeah. And there's a bounty person in this area somewhere. campfire.
know there's a bounty out here. But you gotta find it, that's the hard part. So he's definitely in the russet wood, which is where I'm at. I didn't really check the Shrine of Galloway. Let me check it. Caves. There was the wolf cave. Hunter's camp. Maybe there? Either there or abandoned camp. It's gotta be. Gotta be somewhere. There they are. Easy enough. Why'd everybody stop? I targeted them. What? Arthur. Word and wrong. That's weird. Nobody would attack him. Exceptional, 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 exceptional. Plenty of grimoires for Aloth to take a look at.
Both of those are pretty decent. Yeah. I think I'm gonna save there and call it an early stream. Go spend some time with the wife. Uh, I appreciate everybody who stopped by. Uh, sorry about the short stream. I'll, I might stream more later tonight, but I need to take a break for a bit. Uh, and I'll definitely be streaming some tomorrow. Probably some Pillars of Eternity and some Hollow Knight. I'm definitely going to play some Hollow Knight. But I, I, I know I'm making progress here, so I kind of want to finish Pillars of Eternity up at the same time. So I appreciate everybody stopped by, watched, talked for a bit. And y'all have a good day. A good evening, I should say. Alright, take care. See ya. Bye.